disciplined force celebrates 128 years of existence. Churches unite to welcome Our Lady of Fatima in Buka. Wartime tourism and economy opportunity for PNG. This is National MTV News with Meriba Tolo. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for Sunday's news. The Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary has marked 128 years of its existence as a disciplinary force. Last night, members of the force gathered with invited guests to celebrate. From the RPNGC, the Colonial Administration created the PNG Defence Force and the PNG Fire Service. As Commander-in-Chief, the Governor-General was the guest of honour last night at the RPNGC's official function. The gathering brought together senior commanders, former police commissioners and commanders of the PNG DF and the correctional services. Tonight I speak on behalf of many of the same age bracket who are still serving the constabulary. Many, many of us will retire soon. Um, therefore, we, as we exit the public service or the Royal Public Constabulary for that matter, we must set the foundation and encourage our younger generations to aspire or excel and embracing the changes that is happening around us. The RPNGC has a proud history. In 1888, the German New Guinea Company established the German New Guinea Constabulary. A few years later, on the British colonial territory of Papua, the British established the Royal Papua Constabulary. After the Germans were defeated in the Second World War, both police forces were merged and became the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary. We have faced many challenges, but today the Constabulary is a formidable organization entrusted with the responsibility of enforcing law and order throughout our nation. The journey has, been, has taken the nation was confronted by many obstacles and, and despite the challenges we have shown through sheer determination and courage that we are confident to adopt the changes affecting our nation, our region and the world as a whole. Going into the future, the RPNGC still faces challenges in the organization. As part of its restructuring, 11 assistant police commissioners have been appointed and commands have been splitted to make policing more manageable. More changes can be expected as the RPNGC prepares to celebrate 130 years in 2018. Thakla Gunga, National MTV News. Pilgrims from the autonomous region of Bougainville have begun the month of rosary prayer by welcoming the world-famous International Pilgrim Virgin Statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Catholics and other mainline churches united in spirit and welcomed the pilgrims in Buka. Fabian Hakalitz was part of the delegation and filed this report from Buka. Air New Guinea's Fokker 100 aircraft Alpha November Echo ferried the world-famous International Pilgrim Virgin Statue of Our Lady of Fatima under the command of Captain Danny Vava and First Officer Jacqueline Nine close to 8,000 Catholic faithful and those from other mainline churches, including political leaders of the national and autonomous Bougainville governments, were present yesterday to welcome Our Lady of Fatima. It was tears of joy for some, while others were touched, and a moment of the conversion of souls, seeing this world-famous international pilgrim virgin statue of Our Lady of Fatima. A protocol was also accorded by the autonomous Bougainville government's chief protocol officer, Philip Kiha. From Boca Town, a procession was led to the cathedral at Haila, where Holy Eucharist was celebrated last night. Women leader Marita Rumina described the crowd as unification for all churches in the autonomous region of Bougainville. All the brother churches, only one bell. The pilgrimage is also special to Bougainville's peace process. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. Vice President of the Autonomous Bougainville Government, Patrick Nisira, says the visit of the International Pilgrim Virgin Statue of Our Lady of Fatima 
brings renewed hope and strength to political leadership on the island. Mr. Nisera says the focus now is for leaders to work for lasting peace. He says the pilgrimage is timely with the peace process on Bougainville. Early this morning, the pilgrims sang, prayed and meditated as they led the procession with the Our Lady of Fatima, a courtesy visit to the Bougainville House of Representatives, then to the Kubu Kukul Christian community. She was then taken to visit the President's Office of the Autonomous Bougainville Government. Vice President Patrick Nisiret told MTV News that as a Catholic, he grew up knowing about the phenomenon at Fatima with Our Lady's messages appealing for world peace. As we move, uh, that Our Lady has visited Parliament, has visited the presidential office here. It means a lot to us, it means a lot to the people, and we believe that it will strengthen and the work of peace, it will encourage the billions, it will strengthen especially the leadership to remain focused on peace so that we may, we may continue to maintain peace during the referendum and after the referendum. As the women of peace have visit is important for Bougainville's peace process. Being the queen of peace, we believe that it will strengthen peace in the hearts of Bougainvillean and in the hearts of the population here. Now close to 8,000 Catholics, which makes up three quarters of Bougainville's population, including members from other mainline churches, have gathered here to welcome the Our Lady of Fatima to begin her pilgrimage here in the autonomous region of Bougainville, here at the Immaculate Heart of Mary Paris in Bougainville Town. Behind me, faithfuls are venerating before Our Lady of Fatima, offering their praise of praise and thanksgiving in seeking divine intervention and also the conversion of sins and healing. Now, it's believed that Our Lady of Fatima is the Queen of Peace in the Catholic Church and Vice President of the Autonomous Bougainville Government, Patrick Nisera, says Our Lady of Fatima is needed at this very time when Bougainville is undergoing a major peace process for its referendum come 2019 in Buka Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more local stories when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. The Ghanem Report or Parliamentary Referral Committee on Education on Teachers' Leave Fairs, Postings and Other Entitlements needs the promised 7.8 million kina funding from the government. In March 2015, Cabinet approved 7.8 million kina for the Phase 1 of the Ghanem Report, However, attempts with finance and treasury to get that money have been unsuccessful. Despite the financial shortfall, recommendations 9 and 12, which is the successful ad adoption of new administrative structure and creation of 55 new staffing positions, have been implemented. Task Force Chairman Baran Sori said one of the biggest tasks completed is the database for teachers. Wartime tourism has the potential to facilitate financial growth in the country's tourism sector. This, according to Adventure Kokoda owner Charlie Lin. He says Papua New Guinea has many relics from the world wars which are sacred to the heritage of Japan, Australia and the United States. Erika Rupma with this report. Charlie Lin, an Australian war veteran in the Vietnam War and politician, initiated the Kokoda Adventure campaign through the Adventure Kokoda in 1992 to embrace the concept of wartime tourism. We are brothers, you know, we are, we are PNG's former Australian Territory, um, fellow Commonwealth member, uh, wartime ally, uh, closest neighbour. You know, we should, you know, we should have more Papua New Guineans living in Australia, we should have more Australians up here because we got to, if we work together, we're assured of a great future, both of us. He developed the idea of trekking the 96 kilometers Kokoda trek after seeing the British, US and Australian soldiers respect for their military history. Over the last 10 years, some 40,000 Australians have trekked Kokoda and have generated an industry worth 400 million kina. However, Lin said because of a dysfunctional model, tracker numbers have been crossing by 48%. And Australian government spent $50 million, around 100 million kina, after it assumed control. 
Down memory lane that tracks source a jurisdiction of responsibility for the World War II veterans, where he has been fighting for a master memorial plan for Kokoda Trek to be developed and used to model for wartime tourism in Papua New Guinea. Wartime tourism is the hub of tourism and involves people who come to pay their respect for heritage, people and land that they would want to leave their footprints behind in some way. Uh, wartime tourism is the real gold in Papua New Guinea and it's renewable gold and it's gold that keeps on giving uh, because it's about people and it's about our relationships. Last Saturday, he led the three trekkers through Kokoda Youth Leadership Program. With its promising end, he has proposed to set up scholarship programs for Papua New Guineans to study history overseas and the introduction of Melanesian studies for locals. We have to set up scholarship programs for young Papua New Guineans to study their own, your own wartime history. Uh, you know, get scholarship exchange programs with the Australian War Memorial where they can go down there for one year or two years and then come back and research your, your, your history of your Papua New Guinea. Eric Arukma, National MTV News. Landowners in Alotau have threatened to stop the water supply into the town. Today, landowners removed parts from a main pump supplying water to half of the town. They say they will keep the main taps closed for the next five days if authorities do not address their grievances. Authorities are yet to receive a formal statement from the concerned landowners. After 22 years of producing homebrew and the sale of marijuana, youths at Port Mosby Momase's eight-mile block have surrendered. A ceremony was held yesterday as youths vowed to stop illegal activities and declare a drug homebrew free zone. The youths hope to help curb crime and have ownership of developments in their zone. Youths at Momase Block Portion 5 to 8 Zone 5A of 8 Mile Settlement have been producing homebrew and marijuana for the past 22 years. This has been the source of income to support their families. However, yesterday all this came to an end as youth leaders and community leaders held a ceremony to stop all these activities. The Zone 5A Momase Development Association is now working closely with the youth to earn a living in a more honest way. The challenge is now for me and the leaders and other leaders outside of 8 Mile to take on board uh, what we can provide for them. Police were also called in to witness the program. Sergeant Dami Sivi told youths police alone cannot maintain law and order within the city. You citizens, you must come up law enforcer too. Inside the community, you stop long them. Time you enforce him, you talk, you papa blow this law, or you by come up custodian, custodian or take ownership law law. But you make him sample like good blessing and inside the community. With the surrender of home equipment and vows to stop illegal activities, the youths want a more proactive approach by leaders for scholarship skills training or community contracts along major road developments in the area. People leaders told me, one time governor and a member, but me kiss him low way. Me like him also, you give him work now, but me work now. Kaga now, but me blah lose law, feed him every picnic blah me blah. Women who have fallen victim and are mostly affected by actions of the youth are now relieved and believe together the community will see changes. Sarenda, me blah hama mas na, me blah to help him all na. Me blah say me blah ogre mama hama mas, all parents lah here. So me blah give full support lol. Jack Lapave, Junior National MTV News. Koki Seventh Day Adventist Pathfinders in Port Mosby took to the Kokoda tracks on a mission to find independence and test their faith in God in the face of hardship. The young adults came back with testimonies of their experiences and a change of perspective. <laughs> For some, the walk was not a new experience. It was a chance for them to reach out to other churches along the track as part of their life's mission as pathfinders. Churches and people they'd met last year on a similar journey. Basically in this walk we were able to donate uh, roof and irons to one of the churches that was uh, discovered by the, by the group. And we've also shared our experiences uh, spiritual experiences with uh, the villages along the way. Uh, the theme of our work was searching for God in the nature. And I believe that uh, through this work, we have changed some young people's lives. Others saw the walk as a testimony of their faith in God. Overwhelmed by the experience, 
This was what young Pathfinder Jennifer Ann Carly had to say. What I've experienced by walking or through walking the Kokoda track is that although the mountains may be high, but when you see God in prayer, everything is possible. Jennifer was among over 40 pathfinders who walked the track for almost eight days from Popondetta to Sagiri. They arrived on Friday the 30th of September in Pope Moresby exhausted but safe and sound. Melissa Gaviro, National MTV News. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll have sporting details in Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The Port Mosby Hockey Women's Competition, the MVP Whites, displayed prowess today when they defeated Wanderers 2-1 in Game 2 of Round 4. The hour-long match was dominated by MVP's attempts at scoring points. The first half of the match started off with a scramble for the ball as both sides fought to keep the ball at the end of the stick. After 20 minutes of tussle, the Wanderers' successful attack landed them a one-point lead. In the dying minutes of the first half, a short corner was awarded to the MVP side after a foul was committed by Wanderers. That gave MVP Whites the gap to level the match one all. The second half was laborious for the Wanderers when MVP went on to score again in the 15th minute, which brought the score to two. Every attack and even short corners from the Wanderers could not go past the properly placed MVP defenses. The match ended with two points to one in favor of MVP Whites. <laughs> Dinero Strico, National MTV Sports. A hectic four-day National Under-18 Basketball Championships came to an end last night at the Tarama Aquatic Center. National Capital District Amateur Basketball Association had every reason to smile, taking out both the men's and women's national titles. A select side for the Oceania Championships in Fiji in December will be selected from these championships. According to Basketball Federation PNG Executive Officer Joel Kalu, the Federation has plans to host the Under-15 and Under-17 National Championships next year. And that ends Shukai Sports for this evening. Up next, we bring you the weather details for the next 24 hours. Stay tuned. Shukai Sports. Shukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. Brief showers in Port Mosby, Kerma, Alotau and Popandeta. A shower or two as well in Daru. To the Momasa region, a shower or two in Leh. Showers in Wau. Brief showers in Madang, Wewak and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, passing showers in Lorengau and Kaviang. A shower or two in Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe. Showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these centers can expect some showers with morning fog over the next 24 hours. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Before we leave you tonight, a recap of our top stories. The Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary celebrates 128 years of existence in Papua New Guinea. Hundreds welcome International Pilgrim Virgin Statue of Our Lady of Fatima in Buka. And wartime tourism, a potential economic booster for Papua New Guinea. And that's the new sports and weather for Sunday, the 2nd of October 2016. From all of us here at MTV, pleasant viewing. Have a safe working week. Good night. <laughs>